Good morning and Jai Hind, dear children. Welcome back to my English class. Um, in my last class, what we did was I had explained what is a what was a what uh, is all about the this preposition. Then I spoke about the simple prepositions. I talked about the preposition of time, preposition of place, and preposition of motion. That is the movement. And then I remember I also told about the compound prepositions. And children, I assume that you all must have done the homeworks, the homework rather. Um, and today we'll proceed with the next topic. And uh, it's on page number 127, okay? Uh, in this, again, uh, what I shall do is, today we'll be talking about few, um, you know, thin line of difference between prepositions like beside and besides, and then, uh, you know, OF OFF and O double F OFF uh, by maybe uh, using some examples and with that we will conclude this chapter and i think um we have pretty four exercises not much to do okay so let's start with it so the very first thing which i'll be talking about is the usage of the preposition beside b-e-s-i-d-e -E, beside beside means by the side of okay uh, like if i have uh, maybe some uh, if you can just yes this is a very good example which i can give uh, it is like um, if you can see this ball okay ball in this box all right and uh, there is a cup on the chair okay so here i can say that this box is just beside the chair okay so that means it is lined up by the side of okay it is just here um, on the same line and we can see that uh, very well right now if i have to use the word besides besides means in addition to that means besides these two things here uh, in the backdrop, I can also see a dog under the desk. All right. So now can you understand besides means when I'm adding something else, something more to uh, already present things. Okay. Maybe in addition to maybe uh, when I'm adding something more to what I already have. So that is besides. Like I can say besides this cat. He has two other pets and they are maybe parrot and a dog. Okay, so that is where we can use besides. Then when I'm talking about beside, it is something like the cat slept on the bed beside the little boy. Okay, now let me talk about the difference between off, O-F and O-double-F, off. Okay, well... Uh, when I'm talking about OF of, of may be used to indicate origin, cause, material. Okay. But when I'm using O double F of, that usually means from, away, or not on. Like uh, when I say uh, switch off the fan, isn't it? So thereby I will use switch O double F of. That means that should not be put on. It should be just put off. That means uh, it should not be in the motion of uh, switched on. All right. So that is off. Like the dress is made of silk. That means uh, here I'm talking about the material um, with which the dress is made. So thereby I'll be using OF off. Um, like I can say looking into the this wall paper i can say that um yeah this monkey's scarf is made of a silken cloth okay so thereby i will use of of 
Okay, now um, I can't see any example which I can state for O double F of from this uh, wallpaper. But yes, uh, I can say that the toddler fell off the chair. Oh yes, I can say this owl fell off from the ostrich's back. So when I'm saying fell off, that means this owl is no more sitting on the back of this ostrich. Okay, it came down, isn't it? It simply fell off. It's no more in that sitting position. So thereby it will be O double F off. Okay, so now the next difference to be understood is um, since and for. Okay, they both are used for uh, denoting the preposition of time. So uh, let us see where uh, since is used, rather how since is used. Since is used to indicate a point of time in the past when an action started while from can be used to indicate an action in the past present or future okay like um i can say that i have been staying in varanasi since uh, since last five years okay uh, but if i have to use from then i would say that <clears throat> Um, maybe an example like my friend begins her school from tomorrow. Okay, so that means from can be used for uh, denoting any tense. It can be uh, used for the future tense. It can be used for the present tense or it can be used for even past tense. Uh, like if I say, uh, she will begin to repay her house loan from December 2020, okay? But if I have to use since, then I would say that she has been paying the loan since last seven years, okay? So that is how since and from are used the word from can indicate actually you know the source or the beginning point okay the origin as well as it can also indicate the reason and the motion like we get heat from the sun okay so that is the source then uh, the poor man suffers from asthma terribly we walked from the market to our house. All right. So now uh, you see from is also used for uh, indicating the reason and you can say the origin or the starting point. Okay. Now let us see what between is all about and where between is used. So between is used when speaking of two or more things or persons while among refers to more than two people or things okay so it sounds very much similar to each other but there is a very thin line of demarcation between these two uh if i say like uh, between is used when speaking of two things or people that means between is only used when i'm talking about two things mark my words Two things or two people, right? Like uh, Shrija is standing between Sukriti and Tejas. Okay, so Shrija is a girl who is standing between two children. They are Sukriti and Tejas. Okay, the cadets distributed the sweets among the children. That means they are, you know, distributing the sweets among uh, that means there are many children okay among refers to more than two people so children i did not state how many children whether it is 37 or whether it is 62 or 50 or how many i did not state that i only know that they are more than two okay so uh, that is how the difference is like 
I'll repeat, between is used for indicating more, uh, two people or two things and among is many people or many things, okay? Now let us see the difference between the usage of with, W-I-T-H, with and B-Y, by. With is a verb preposition which relates to the instrument used to do something while by refers to the agent or the doer. Okay, that means the subject of the sentence. Okay, now um, I prefer to write with a fountain pen rather than a ballpoint pen. So with is now, it is somehow related to the instrument used to do something. That means I prefer using uh, you know, a uh, fountain pen rather than using a ballpoint pen. So instrument is the pen. Now, uh, by refers to the agent or the doer. That means if I say this poster has been drawn by one of my children. Okay, so that means who has drawn this poster? It is drawn by one of the one of uh, my child. Okay. Uh, it can be like this chart was drawn by me with uh, maybe acrylic paint. Okay, so when I'm talking about the doer, when I'm talking about the person who did, so thereby I will use by. Okay, now uh, difference between on time and in time. It's very important. On time means at the planned time neither late nor early just on time that means you are so super punctual that you are neither one minute late nor one um, i would say uh, you are just on time that means you are neither early nor late just perfect on time that means if i say that you all need to be uh, there for the assembly by 8, say at 8.30 a.m. in the morning. So uh, when I find my children, all children present at 8.30 a.m., so I'll say that you all were just on time, okay? Now, in time means not late, but with a comfortable margin. That means uh, it's acceptable, you know, uh, you are neither that late nor you are too early okay just maybe uh, having a margin of say one or two minutes it was left otherwise you know the program would have started or something like that okay so in time means not late but with a comfortable margin that means you have time okay the train uh, would have left if you would have been maybe say five minutes late. So you were just, you know, in time. Like we reached the bus stop in time for the bus. Okay. That means if you would have arrived maybe three to four minutes late, you would have missed the bus. Okay. So that was in time. So um, now I believe you all would be able to do exercise B, which is on page number 128. And at the same time, I think you all will be also able to do exercise C, which is on page number 129. Okay. And then by end of uh, this chapter, we have a small exercise to do in the form of a challenge. Uh, that is on page number 130, that is, uh, I would just like to read it out so that you all understand what is to be done. Now, uh, in this challenge part, some prepositions have been incorrectly used. You need to rewrite the paragraph using the correct prepositions. You may also omit prepositions when they are not required. That means uh, in that, uh, you know, paragraph, I believe there are some places where uh, extra prepositions might have been inserted. And uh, so you need to decipher whether the usage of prepositions at that places, uh, whether it is necessary 
or not that you have to see and there might be some places where the prepositions have not been used okay so um i would just like to read the paragraph and um, you need to pay attention to it and then whatever you feel is necessary please write it in your books because i can see there are lines drawn in your book so the question is close by the nursery is a garden that is tended to by an old man besides the garden there is a church in sundays many people come to the church for the service some of the people enter the garden on one corner of the garden there is a small pond for many water lilies so uh, this is just the half of the you know exercise and uh, looking into the first sentence what do you think should be uh, the answer close by the nursery is a garden that is tended to by an old man so i have understood what is wrong in this sentence so i want you all to just do it first on your own and then definitely as promised your answer keys would be also shared so just try it out and uh, if you still have any you know uh, problems all right so i would definitely discuss it okay so i think that is all now just give me a moment so that i can find something more interesting to share okay so i uh, got a very interesting uh, you know video link which i would love to share with all of you uh, after a while before that as i was uh, discussing the challenge exercise i think by this time you must have understood where was uh, the preposition wrongly used well i would just give you a hint rather i would say that i can give you the answer for the first sentence but later on the other sentences you need to do it on your own like good children okay so uh, the incorrect version was close by the nursery is a garden that is tended to by an old man so this is the incorrect version now what is the correct form the correct form would be close to the nursery so it is not by the nursery it should be close to the nursery is a garden that is tended to by an old man okay now the next um is besides the garden there is a church so what is wrong in this should it be besides the garden or something else mm, i think it should be beside the garden there is a church okay so after these uh, the lines are pretty simple i think you all are smart enough to do it on your own so without uh, further ado i would really want you all to go through this video this is a very beautiful video which i have found and here i go with it is a word that is used to link noun or pronoun with other words in the sentence link here means they provide a relationship between noun and other words in any sentence and thus makes the sentence complete these other words may be noun verb or adjective let's understand them with an example the cat is running and now where is it sitting the cat is sitting under the table here under is used to link table which is a noun and sitting placement of cat if we do not use under and write the same sentence it is the cat is sitting the table we are not able to get 
what is the relationship between the sitting of cat and table so children uh, if you remember in my first video i was talking about that green mug with that money plant in it and then i was sharing the same example but although here the cat is sitting where under the table isn't it and i was talking about uh, keeping the mug on the table so a uh, preposition is you know a word which shows the relationship of a noun with maybe the other word the other word can be noun verb adjective or whatever let's see using under we are confirm that cat is sitting under the table hence under is a preposition here now let's look into the types of preposition these are divided into three types depending on three situations when an event or thing happened where the event or thing occurred and in which direction the event or thing is happening the preposition that describe when an event happened are defined as preposition of time examples of them are in on at before after let's look into some sentence example to make things clear my birthday falls in january here when my birthday falls it falls in the month of january in here is a linking word and hence is a preposition my vacation ends on monday when my vacation ends it ends on monday on here is a linking word and hence is a preposition it gets cold at night when it gets cold it gets cold at night at here is a linking word and hence is a preposition remember that this preposition links when one thing happened in context to other now let's look into next one the preposition that describes where anything is in context to other are defined as preposition of place examples of them include under above in on and at now you might be thinking we had in on at as preposition of time and here also same but please note they are used in different meanings let's see some sentence example to make things clear the books are on the table now where are the books placed they are placed on the table here on describes the link between table and books hence it is a preposition of place the plane is just below the cloud where is the plane with respect to cloud it is just below here below is a linking word remember this preposition provides where the thing is with respect to another now let's look into the next type so you see children by this time uh, we all have covered up two types of preposition that is preposition of time and preposition of place and see how beautifully it is denoted you know by those uh, drawings right so now we are moving on to the third type that is the preposition of motion so let's see what the sir has you know to explain how beautifully he is explaining just pay attention to this the preposition that describes where to go or where to put something are called as preposition of direction some of the examples of them are to into of from let me give you some sentence example to make things clear we went to london last week here to describe in which direction we went so here to is the linking word we went up the hill here up describes in which direction he went so up is a linking word here remember this preposition provide in which direction the thing is in respect to another so these are the main three types of preposition now let's look into one more term 
related to preposition. Prepositional phrase. What is the phrase? It is a group of words. Now, children, prepositional phrase is also known by the name of compound preposition. Remember, we did uh, like in lieu of, uh, on account of. So these are nothing but the prepositional phrase, which are also known by the name of compound preposition. And what is a prepositional phrase? It is a group of words containing preposition. Let me give you some examples of it. The rabbit hopped through the garden. Here, through is a preposition and through the garden is a whole prepositional phrase. Let's see next one. The balloon drifted up the stairs. Here, up is the preposition and up the stairs is the whole prepositional phrase. Let's look into one more example to make things even clear. The tiger crept slowly over the grass. Here, over is the main preposition and over the grass is the prepositional phrase. So remember this, that prepositional phrase are group of words containing preposition. That's all about preposition in this video. Let's quickly recap what we have learned in this video. We discussed about what is a preposition. So, preposition is a word that links noun with other words in the sentence. Then we discussed about the types of preposition. Depending on the usage in the sentence, prepositions that describe when an event occurred are called preposition of time. Preposition that describe where an event or thing is are called preposition of place. And the preposition that describes in which direction an event or thing is are called preposition of direction. And lastly, we discussed about prepositional phrase. Group of words containing preposition are called prepositional phrase. That's all in this video. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please so that was beautifully explained isn't it and by now i'm very sure that everybody has must have understood isn't it so um so i really feel very uh, elated when i find you know that my children they have understood so uh, probably by next week we can have a short test on this uh, so that you know I can also get the feel uh, where uh, lies the problem okay so um, please do the homeworks and uh, it is to be done in a legible and a very neat handwriting in your books and if you have any queries if you have any doubts you can you know text me on my personal window until then take care be good children and stay happy. Thank you and Jai Hind. See you next time with yet another new topic. Thank you.